Hey everybody, Peach here, and today we're going to be building a DIY rack-mounted flywheel trainer. And if you're unaware, flywheels provide variable resistance in that the harder you pull, the harder it pulls. So as opposed to gravity-based systems where you can kind of cheat on the negative and just let gravity do its job, with these it's much harder to do that. And you can experience the benefit of eccentric overload. So let's cover the design. So the unit mounts to your rack using hitch pins and it can slide up and down any one of your racks uprights, but can also be mounted to your racks lower cross members. Now full disclosure, do not mount the unit upside down on your upper cross member. That's a disaster waiting to happen. It is made out of wood, screws and glue and I don't want anyone getting hurt. Yeah, the design incorporates an adjustable length rope. So if you need the rope to be longer, you simply unwrap it on the back rope cleat. And if you need it to be shorter, you simply wrap it. Cool. Now with this DIY project, you can perform deadlifts, curls, tricep pushdowns, belt squats, Really any exercise that you can also do with any cable pulley system. Now on here I currently have two 10 pound weights. The more weight you add, the more inertia will be produced. Now having said that, my advice to you is to leave enough room to add as many plates as you want. I currently have enough space to add three 10 pound plates. But perhaps just start with one 10 pound plate. You can always add more plates later. And just note, the 20 pounds of resistance is actually quite a lot. So this design does not allow for any kind of quick change to the plates organically. Using these plates with one inch holes meant that I had to use lock nuts and washers to squeeze the hell out of them so that the plates always move with the threaded rod. Having said that, one hack that can be used to rapidly add or remove plates is to use one of my earlier DIY projects from way back in 2021. Okay, these magnetic plate blocks, which are just blocks made out of wood with neodymium magnets on both sides, we can add or remove plates. Okay, so I'm gonna put seven on here, and this will only work if you're using plates with a flat surface, okay? If you use plates like this, which have the recessed area with lettering, there's not gonna be enough surface area to make a strong connection, and this thing could go flying off. Okay, five pound plate. Let's see if it goes flying off and I die. Right? This thing ain't going anywhere. In fact, it's very difficult to take the plates off. <clears throat> there, came off. Now, while you can mount the unit to any one of your uprights and move it up and down, my favorite place to put it is right here at the rear of my front cross member. Placing it right here still allows me to use my Rep Aries low row and it allows me to flat bench inside my rack without having to move the unit. Now, if you do wanna leave the unit in place like I do, back here at the rear of my lower front cross member without having to move it to do low to high exercises, meaning pulling down, this is what you do. Take another hitch pin and put a welded ring on it. Now I'm gonna mount this to my upper cross member right above the unit, and on the back side, I'm using a one inch washer that has E-tape wrapped on it, so I don't scratch up my rack, and then of course a linch pin to secure it. All right, so this is the pulley that we've been pulling on, okay? We've been attaching our attachment to this. Instead, just simply clip onto that welded ring, okay? Last step, take another welded ring, and we're gonna hitch this directly onto the rope then pinch the side that's attached to the rope cleat at the very top, and then just pull the rope through, okay? Now we're gonna put the rope around 
and pull the welded ring. Okay, now it's hitched on. And that's it. Now attach your favorite attachment and exercise. All right, one more thing and then we'll get to the DIY tutorial. I know what you're gonna ask, how much resistance does 20 pounds on the flywheel offer? How much resistance does 10 pounds offer? And the answer is I can't really measure it. So with cable pulley systems, for example, I can use a luggage scale to test how accurate those weight stacks are. So this is saying 19.84, it's jumping up to 20 pounds and some change, and the stack says 20 pounds. Since I'm holding it steady, I can get a reading. On the flywheel, those numbers are jumping all over the place, so I can't really measure it. All I can say is, if you put 20 pounds on there, it's gonna kick your butt. If you put 10 pounds on there, it's also gonna give you a great workout. And now for the best part of the video, the step-by-step -step DIY tutorial. And if you do plan on building one of these, you should definitely go to designbuildlift.com and view the accompanying article to get more detailed tips on how to build this. Step number one, we're gonna cut a piece of 16 inch long two by six lumber and draw a line right down the middle, okay? Now all the lumber we're gonna be using in today's project will be two by six lumber. All right, step number two, go ahead and cut another piece of two by six that's exactly as long as your rack is wide, okay? If you have a two by two rack, don't assume it's exactly two inches. If you got a three by three rack, don't assume it's exactly three inches. Go ahead and take a piece of lumber and then go ahead and mark it with a pencil and then cut it. All right, next step. Now go ahead and cut a length of PVC pipe. This is gonna go on your hitch pin and allow you to create a roller to slide the unit up and down your uprights. So I'm gonna be using one inch hitch pins. You take your pick on what to use yourself. But this is a seven and a half inch long, one inch hitch pin, link down below to purchase. And I'm using one and one quarter inch PVC pipe to make this roller, okay? So I cut this to be just shy of the width of my rack. So this happens to be 2.75 inches long for me. Now take these two pieces and make sure that you mark the center line for both pieces. We're gonna line those up right now and we're gonna mount this to our rack with a clamp. Okay, now that that's mounted, we're gonna measure from this interior corner outward. So I'm gonna take this one and one quarter inch piece of PVC and it's gonna act as my roller. So now I'm gonna measure from this interior corner right here out to the exterior edge of this one and one quarter inch of PVC. And I get six inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just an inch and a half as a buffer and I'm gonna cut two pieces going outward here that are seven and a half inches long, which I've already done. And they go on just like this. All right, next step. Now we're gonna take one of those seven and a half inch pieces long or however long you needed for your rack and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line bisecting it. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna line it up so that that line I just drew bisects one of the holes on my rack. Okay, and once you got it lined up, go ahead and take your pencil and just trace that circle. Okay, now keep that right on there, don't move. And now I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna go ahead and trace its position as well. Okay, there we go. So. This is that interior hole I just traced. This is inside the pipe, and now I have, and I have an arc on the outside of the pipe. So now I'm gonna take a one and one eighth inch spade bit and drill these holes. All right, now we're ready to drill. So I have the center of each hole marked. I got my one and one eighth inch spade bit here. I got these clamped down. I'm gonna go through the top board and partially into the second. Uh, and I'm gonna do that for both holes and then we'll swap them so that we make sure that we have holes that are perfectly aligned between the two pieces. All 
right, next step. Now that we have our holes drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my rack, make sure everything fits before we start gluing and screwing everything together. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my one inch hitch pin to my one and one eighth inch holes here. And again, if you use a different hitch pin, you'll of course need different size holes. So let me add this right here. And this goes on here like this. Okay, and then on this side, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the roller that we made, okay? And we'll run it through here. Now, on the ends here, just, so, just note that these hitch pins come with these, but these are a pain in the ass to add or remove, so go ahead and buy these instead, okay? These will secure the hitch pins, okay? There we go. Now this ain't going anywhere. Now I'm gonna take this piece, add it to the front, all right, so we're gonna add that piece, and it looks like everything is lined up perfectly, and this thing should turn out great. All right, next step. Now we're gonna glue and screw everything together. So take that 16 inch piece, we're gonna put this piece right in the center, then these pieces go on. Make sure that you put these on right. You don't wanna put them on upside down, that would stink, then these pieces, okay? And make sure you pre-drill before adding any screws to prevent the wood from splitting. All right, let's do it. All right, the glue is now dry and it came out looking fantastic. So what we're gonna do now is drill four holes here, 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 and here, and we're gonna have counter bores on the back side so that the nut and washer that will go in here will be recessed in the wood. So to figure all that out, you need to take a three quarter inch threaded rod that's 24 inches long and three quarter inch pillow block bearings and assemble that. So use the holes in your bearings to figure out your hole placement. And the other factor in determining hole placement will be the diameter of the washers that you use on the back side. So these are one inch in diameter. I wouldn't go bigger than that. If you do, your counter bores are gonna have to be bigger. So to sum up, half inch bolts use three and a half inch ones with half inch washers that are one inch in diameter with of course half inch nuts. Okay, now to drill those holes, I used a half inch bit and a one and one eighth inch Forstner bit. All right, next step. Now we're gonna drill the holes so that we can mount a rope cleat to the rear side of our mount. So to do so, we need to figure out where we can put it. So we don't want interference with the pillow block bearing. So go ahead and just mount that on. I didn't put the nuts on, it's just to get the position. Okay, so put that on and then go ahead and take a hitch pin and put it through the opposite side of where your pillow block bearing is. Okay, now that tells us that I can't go any further left in the edge of the pillow block bearing and I can't go further this way, otherwise we're gonna have interference with the tip of this hitch pin.
All right, the paint is now dry and it came out looking awesome. Okay, now what we're gonna do now is we are gonna mount the rope cleat. So I got my one quarter inch, four inch long bolts through there, okay? And if you get a different rope cleat, of course you might need different bolts. But we're gonna go ahead and mount this guy. So it's gonna go through the back. We're gonna put it through those holes. Just like that. Okay, now you can see I use four inch long bolts because it's flat here, it doesn't stick out, okay? So now we're gonna put a washer in each one and a nylon lock nut. All right, now this is where it gets interesting. We're gonna turn this into this. All right, so we are zoomed in right now, and let me just zoom out real quick. We have all this excess uh, threaded rod here. We're gonna end up cutting off a portion of it later. Let's just focus on this area right here. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add a three quarter inch lock nut, must be a lock nut, and you're gonna add it right here. So screw it all the way down to this position. Then you're gonna add a three quarter inch washer that's two inches in diameter, then another nut, and then two rubber grommets, okay? Just like this. Now we're gonna actually tie the rope here later, and then we're gonna tighten all these nuts down and it'll pinch the rope and keep it secure. Then after adding those two rubber grommets, you're gonna add another nut, another washer, and then another grommet. And the purpose of this grommet is to act as a spacer so that we can still easily access the set screws in the pillow block bearing. So after that grommet, add your pillow block bearing and then one more nut on the end. And don't over tighten this, otherwise you'll damage the pillow block bearing. So once you've got all this situated, add this pillow block bearing and then mount it with bolts and nuts. You can see I got it all mounted to the wood mount, okay? And then finally add the nut right here. And go to designbuildlift.com for the accompanying article for this project to see graphical representations and an explanation of the order I just explained. Now let's move on to the next step where we're gonna add the weight. All right, next step. Now we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna mount it to the rack. Okay, and now we're gonna add our plates. Now, ideally the plates you're gonna add, you could add five pound plates, seven and a half, 10 pounds. I'm actually gonna add 20. Now, the more weight you add, the more inertia it will have, okay? So, the first step is we're gonna add one of those three quarter inch washers. All right, now we're gonna take these. What is this? Well, I cut out circles the size of those washers out of this grippy shelf liner. Again, link down below to purchase. So we're gonna use these to create friction so that the plates spin with the threaded rod, okay? We don't want the plates just spinning independent of the rod. So I'm gonna take two layers and just slide that on, okay? Now, ideally the plates you have are gonna be completely flat, okay? As opposed to plates like this which have a recessed area for lettering, okay? Because there'll be less surface area with these. So ideally, you're gonna pick plates that are completely flat. So we'll add a plate. But before we do that, we also need to cut three quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC, and this will act as a spacer because there's quite a gap here. We don't want it rattling around. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add that to the interior of the plate but we also don't want this to spin. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some electrical tape right against this guy here, just to tighten the gap. Okay, now we're adding that spacer and then we'll add the plate. Okay, now for most people, this might be sufficient, but I'm gonna go ahead and go the extra mile and I'm gonna add two 10 pound plates. So I also cut big ones a little bit smaller than the 10 pound plate. 
Okay, now the idea is all this will cause friction. These things will cause friction. And when we tighten the two nuts against each other, it'll keep this, these plates locked in so this always rotates with the threaded rod. So we're gonna add another spacer and more electrical tape. Now we're gonna add two more of these little guys here, one more washer, and then another three quarter inch nylon lock nut. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what a pain in the butt it is to tighten these nuts. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of that grippy shelf liner or some rubber gasket if you got it, and we're just gonna wrap it around the threads. This will help protect the threads from damage when we add our vice grips. I'm just gonna put this here so we don't damage that. Okay, now we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna tighten it down. This is tedious. Okay, now we gotta make sure it's really tight. So tighten the hell out of it. Okay, and now, see that spin? How awesome is that? All right, next step. Now we're gonna go ahead and determine how much we're gonna cut off. Now you don't have to cut off any. I'm gonna do it because I don't like all this excess sticking out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a third plate. Now, should you use three plates? I don't know, it's up to you. But I want the ability to do so, so I'm gonna just add a plate here, maybe a grommet, and go ahead and mark that, and that's as long as it'll be. All right, now let's go cut that off. All right, last step. Now we're gonna add our rope. And I'm using 550 cord, otherwise known as paracord. And the reason I'm doing that is because the thinner the rope, the easier it's going to be to put a knot right here and tighten these nuts down to really pinch the hell out of it. So as far as distance is concerned, you need to determine how far away do you want to be able to stand from the unit. So if you want to stand a max of 10 feet away, you need 20 feet of rope. So determine your distance and double it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this, which I already did. And now we burn the ends so it doesn't fray. Okay, and now we're gonna tie it right here. Okay, and I'm no Eagle Scout, so I'm just tying a basic double knot. All right, now I'm gonna take the other end and I'm gonna tie it to this rope cleat. So it goes through that hole. We'll just tie a double knot here too. Okay, and now I'm gonna take all this excess and I'm gonna wrap it around the rope cleat. And we'll just leave some excess right there. So now all we gotta do is tighten these two nuts right here. So again, I'm gonna use my rubber gasket and some vice grips. And we want this to pinch the hell out of this knot. Okay, that looks good. Now this nut needs to be tightened. And this nut's really just there to keep this washer from rattling around. All right, that's it. Now we just add our pulley, a carabiner, and our favorite attachment. All right, the DIY rack-mounted flywheel trainer, a great addition to any home gym. 
Now for more details on this project, please visit designbuildlift.com. And to purchase any of the materials needed for this project, please consider making those purchases via the shopping links located down in the video description below. Shopping via those links costs you nothing extra and it helps support the channel. Well, that does it for this project and I look forward to seeing you again in the next project. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to be alerted the moment the next project drops.